Welcome everybody. It's Tyler here at the championship checking team number 176 aces high. This team has had an absolutely phenomenal season as recording this as well too. Currently the number one seed uh, in their division. Just watched their last match. Holy cow. Does this team know how to shoot, know how to get up on Traverse Rung and just be a fantastic score as well too. By the way, to help me speak more about this robot, I have Nicole, Anna Lois, Sarah, and Aiden. And we're going to be following that cargo journey path through this robot, of course. Uh, Couple things to keep an eye out on. They have some cool LED sensor feedback. A really elegant turret as well too. Take a look more at that and their climber lightning fast coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Well, welcome, welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. So let's start out with your intake, uh, talking about that. Love to hear just what's gone into it, what's worked, uh, any iterations you've gone through as well. All right, so on our intake over here, the ball will travel up through it. It's four bar intake. And so we, the ball will go up through these wheels spin. Do you want to spin them? Just like that. And so basically what we've had some issues on in the past is our bearings all over the robot in the polycarb. We've had to use screws to keep them in. And so we had to add these metal plates sort of on the more stressful points of where the robot could get hit. And so when the robot does get hit, if we're in like um, a defensive situation or something like that, um, we made sure that the intake is very compliant, it can move around. And so we did this by ensuring that our pneumatics here are actually in when the intake is out. And so they extend to get it up. And so when it does this, it makes sure that the cylinders within are protected so that they don't get bent, which is something that we've had issues with in the past. So you say you actually added metal plates under here somewhere? Yeah, so we added metal plates here. We also had a pinching issue. Yeah. So right here we added some little flaps that keep the balls from getting stuck right in here. From uh, on this type of like over intake here, did you have to experiment with like any sort of bumper material or anything like that? Um, mm -hmm. I've heard other teams they've had slipping that sort of thing too. We've used the same bumper material for a while. Sure. So this is sort of similar to what we've had in the past but we um, had to experiment in the beginning with the compression that we could have here in order to get the ball to rise over the bumper. Um, and then I'm not sure this will be Anna Lewis or you covering this, but uh, for this area here, can you talk a little bit about the belting on this? Yeah, so we have our belts in here that sort of feed the ball into our tunnel and they're run by two Neos. And so basically if the ball comes in through here, we don't want it to get stuck. So these will just run and sort of push it in towards the middle. So let's go on and talk a little bit more about indexing LED feedback, that sort of thing. Analysts can talk a bit more about that. So love to hear uh, both from a, the feedback side, how are you using the LED feedback to communicate to your drive team and your robot, uh, and anything else from an index area as well too. Yeah, so for our robot, what ends up happening is once the ball, is, we have, you know, we have two balls that'll end up going in. They'll be stationed inside the robot, and then within our robot, you can see we have these two color sensors, and that lets our drivers know when they're on the field uh, whether or not we have two LED or we have two balls stationed inside, and that they're ready to shoot it out of the turret. Um, and then that is represented through our LED strips that we have on both sides. Um, in addition to that, our LED strips also help us to know uh, what mode we're in, whether we want to go into climb, it'll change it into a different color and then our drivers can see from afar that we're ready to go and we're ready to climb. Um, in addition to that, uh, in terms of programming for our LED strips, uh, we also uh, use Java and we also have a Raspberry Pi stationed inside of our robot as well. And um, yeah, then after that, it's fished all the way through up to the turret and it's helped to stay stationed by these flywheels that we have stationed inside. Um, and in addition to that, we have some sticky tape that helps to grip 
Nice, these yeah. Balls. So, yeah. Um, let's actually see a piece of cargo go in, and if you can just describe uh, the LED feedback as that happens, that'd sure, be great. Sure. So as you can see, it gripped the ball and now it's stationed inside and only one blue strip of the LED is lit up. And then if we put a second one in, you can see that the whole thing is lit up. We have a full set of cargo in there and our drivers know that they're ready to shoot it. Um, from a, a ball ejection standpoint, if you intake that wrong one, what, what does that process look like if you were to intake the wrong color? So that would be represented in the LED strip as well. If uh, in the game you're only supposed to have, um, in this case with our bumpers, we would know we only want red cargo, so we would not want blue. And that would also be represented in the LEDs. Um, and yeah. Is there like an ejection action that happens? Like do you yes. eject through your shooter or through your intake? How does that work? So that's manual on our driver's station. Sure. Our operator will actually click a button and that um, is controlled by our operator where it'll eject out. Like say if we picked up an extra ball, we're not supposed to have three in there. They can easily fish it out real quick. Uh, let's keep moving on your robot. Let's talk about uh, the uh, shooter and the hood a little bit more. Sarah's going to cover uh, more about that. So I'd love to just hear, uh, th this is a very elegant uh, turret that you have, which I think is attested a lot to uh, how well you've been shooting, plus with your limelight as well too. So talk to me more about this assembly, what's gone into it. Yeah, so actually we, um, our whole, the whole base of the turret is 3D printed in four sections. So you can see that there's one quadrant here, here, like in quarters. Um, and then our our shooter is actually like, it's, it's machined in our shop. It can lift up. Wait, is, oh yeah. Um, can you shoot? Um, this, we actually had to, like redesign the whole thing because it was too heavy with the climber on. Sure. So um, we had to do that. We also had, um, we have the flywheel, which um, um, it like shoots the ball and this kind of gives it like spin so that um, it's going like in the right direction Yeah. and it doesn't um, fly out of the turret or the hub. Yeah, because it um, gives you the right spin that you need, right? Or, or does it give it no spin at all when it comes out? Um, it actually does have a little bit of, I think, top spin, so that it doesn't um, bounce out of the hub, or sure. it has less of a chance of bouncing out of the hub. Um, so these spin a little bit faster. Um, these are like two inch wheels, and these are four. They're a little bit harder than like most people use, but they can expand a little bit when we're shooting. Did you um, have to experiment with different types of durometer wheels, or is this the one that you kind of went with from the get-go? Um, yeah, we've had like different durometer wheels. These are just, I guess they work better. Yeah. Um, and they're more accurate. So, and the whole turret can actually spin 360 degrees. It can't right now because it's enabled. Um, but like it can spin, it stops because of the hose, but we actually have full range of um, where it's going. Yeah. And then the limelight locks onto the target. so. We have soft lock and hard lock. Soft lock is like just a rough estimate of where the target is, so it'll follow the hub around wherever it is on the field. And then hard lock um, really locks on and shoots so that we can aim really well. We've actually gotten really precise with soft lock, so if it knows where the target is, um, we just have to stop for a little bit to focus on it and we can just shoot. But if it's locked onto a different target, then we have to go back into hard lock and then soft lock so that we can shoot, which actually happened in our last match. So, yeah. And it's been working out great so far. Of course, like I said, last match we just saw, uh, put up like 170 plus points in that. So absolutely phenomenal with that. Let's try to wrap up on your robot. We'll talk about your climber a bit more. Aiden's going to cover uh, that area. Uh, I know we're not going to be able to do a full deployment, but we'll show off a little bit and just uh, describe what's going on during that process and how you came up with this wickedly fast climb as well. Okay, so with this climb, we kind of designed it a couple times. We had another design that we were going to go with. It would be a little faster, but it, we couldn't get it to work. We prototyped before, so we just couldn't get it to work. So we ended up going with this, where this part, so we have the elevator, which goes up, hooks down on the middle bar. We skip, we skip the first bar, and it's faster. It pulls it down, which then the bar hits onto these and latches on so that this can then pivot out. It has a 15 degree pivot with the pneumatics here. So it pivots out 15 degrees, sure. which gives us the angle that we're allowed to have two swings and then this will go 
underneath the next bar, hit it, and then just pull up on it, which will release these hooks from the middle bar and then pull these back up to the high bar, and then we'll do that until we get to the traversal. The climb is actually pretty cool because it's pretty much all like automated. So our operator just has to press a button yeah. and it just goes all by itself. So, so let me ask you, you're part of the drive team and uh, a, a team like yours that has had such a, a amazing showing on shooting cargo out there. Is there kind of like a threshold where you're like, hey, at this point, let's not even climb. Let's just keep shooting more and more, especially during playoffs. So there might be, if we have two other traversal bots, yeah. it's definitely more like, we'll get a higher score if we stay out and shoot. But in quals, some teams can't get the traversal. They can't get the high, so we have to climb so that we get the ranking point. How about in playoffs, though, when you're, when you're approaching playoffs? Because that's totally different dynamic with the RP, yeah. right? So how do you approach playoffs that way? So playoffs, if we have two other bots that can do traversal climb, and we're in, if we're a captain, we'd be in the middle, it'd be easy for us to stay out. We'd get more points. And like we can get the extra balls that like the other team can't get. That would put us ahead by a few points. Sure. So I would definitely stay out if we are in playoffs. Well, 176 aces high, looking absolutely phenomenal here at the championships. Thanks a lot for taking the time to speak with us about your robot. We wish you best of luck, but we know you're going to do awesome. So congratulations, Thank and you. can't wait to see how you do. Thanks a lot. Thank you. First updates now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.